Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. I am excited to be here. I am excited to be able to do a tutorial. I had a request after I posted my last video and there was a couple people who asked for a tutorial on open-ended snuggle sacks. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's actually a super fast, easy, quick thing to do. Um, and the cool part about these is that they are reversible. So you can use two pattern pieces if you wanted to and then have two different designs or a solid piece, whatever you want it to do. Um, and the end is open. So basically we're gonna be making this and the end stays open. Um, and like this one, you can turn it so that the solid color or whatever the inside is, is now the um, outside. So you have lots of options with this because you can mix and match your patterns if you wanted to. So that is what we're gonna do. All right, so for this project, you're gonna need some fleece. Um, I have probably about a quarter of a yard, a little bit more. It just depends on how big you're gonna make your snuggle sack. I'm using double layers of fleece so i have two pieces of fleece and some fuzz um you're gonna need some boning this is basically the stuff that you put in bustiers you can buy this at joanne fabric by the yard you can also buy it in packs or you can get it off of amazon i will put links to this in on amazon but you can definitely get it in the store you're gonna want pins i use pins and clips for this i use pins at the very very end for um before before i add in the boning so it's up to you if you use pins or clips, but I use both. I'll also put links to these amazing clips that I get. Um, I get them from Amazon. They're wonderful. Uh, scissors, you're gonna need those. <laughs> um, you're gonna wanna have a ruler and something to write with. And of course, your sewing machine. Okay, so first what you need to do is you need two pieces of each fabric. Um, depending on how your fabric, the design of your fabric, you could do this a couple of ways. Um, you, if there's no, if you notice the birds on mine, they go in one direction. So when my, when I'm, mine is done, I don't want my birds to be upside down on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two separate pieces so that when I put them together, I can make sure my birds are facing the right direction. But if you're using a fabric like something like this, you don't have to cut it all the way around you can just fold it in half and leave this edge like this because it goes in any direction all right so i'm going to be making a snuggle sack that is 14 inches wide by um 16 inches tall so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it out it's going to be 15 across 15 wide by um 17 actually 15 wide by 16 long and i'll explain that in a second so let's cut out two pieces of pattern fabric that is 14 by 16. Okay, so now I've cut out two pieces. What I want to do is I want to make sure that they are facing the same direction. So I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see. This fabric is hard to kind of see, but if you see the bird here, I want my birds to all be facing the same way. So we're gonna go like this. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect, but you just wanna make sure that your pattern is all facing the same direction. Now just clip these together temporarily. And if you're making this for a smaller pet, just reduce the size. Um, it's, it's up to you, the size. It's not mandatory that it's this big. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your solid color or your inside color or whatever you're using for the inside. Um, and you're going to take and you're going to cut it the same width. So for me, it's gonna be 15 wide, except I'm going to make mine 19 long. Um, in my other tutorials for snuggle sacks, which I'll put above, they're made a little bit differently. But for this and for what we're doing, I'm gonna make mine about three inches longer but only do that for your inside piece. So let's cut our, I'm gonna cut mine 15 by 19, so 15 across and 19 long. Okay, so now that you've done that, we're gonna take your pattern piece and place it, or your out, this is gonna be your outside piece. For me, I'm calling it a pattern piece, but really this is my outside piece. And place it on top, line up the bottom and the sides. Don't line up the top, just the bottom and the sides, and then pin it or clip it all the way around. 
Okay, so now that you've clipped it, you're going to go over to your sewing machine and we're going to do um, a quarter to a half inch stitch. We're going to start at the top here and we're going to go all the way around and end here. Don't stitch any of this top area. Okay. So if you guys noticed, um, I have my Singer now because my Bernina is in the shop. My other machine, the one that I used for my business, needed to go to the shop. So <laughs> we're using this one. All right, so I would use at least a five or six inch stitch length for this because um, of how thick it is. Okay, so now you're done and you have, you should have something that looks like this. It should be connected on three sides. This should still be open. So what you're gonna wanna do is get your scissors, make sure that you've caught all four layers um, on the three sides. You're going to want to, I round off my edges a little bit, so I just kind of go like this. And then I flip it over and I go like this. And then when you get up to here, on this edge right here, you're going to want to just trim this a little bit. Do the same thing on this side. So if, just so you guys can see what that looks like, it should kind of look like this. And then it looks like this at the bottom. Okay, now for the fun part. Okay, so now what you need to do is you're gonna wanna reach in and you wanna flip this so that it's the right side is out, so just like this. And then stick your hands in and poke out your corners so now you show something that looks like this. Now you're going to reach in and you're going to grab your pattern piece. You're going to pull it so that it's on the outside. The, the right side of it is on the outside. Okay. So now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your inside piece and roll it over top your outside piece. Now, I personally don't like this unfinished edge look. So what I do is um, I take this and I just tuck it under a little bit like this, not much, just a little bit, about, I don't know, a half an inch or so. Just make sure whatever you do that this is still touching this piece right here. Um, you want them to be connected. So what you're gonna wanna do is roll it to the width that you want where it's still touching your, pe your pattern piece and then you're going to pin this piece to your pattern piece and then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, so now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch around this and you're going to stitch close to the bottom. You want to catch these two pieces together, but you're going to leave an opening about this big. So don't stitch all the way around. Leave yourself an opening like this big. Okay, so now that you've stitched around the edges, you should have an opening right here. You're gonna wanna get your boning. Now, you can leave the boning in the casing if you want to, but if you do that, I recommend that you, um, I'm trying to get this so you can see it. I recommend that you trim this little clear, trim a piece of this boning off and then um, stitch the edge of the casing, casing closed. If you try to leave the casing on and not stitch it closed, when you go to push it through here, it's just gonna pop out. Um, I am going to put it in without the casing. It's up to you. It, it really, I guess it doesn't matter if it's in the casing or not. I sometimes use the casing and sometimes I don't. Um, it really just depends on the, what, the, what I'm doing and who it's for. A lot of times I leave the casing on when I sell things. It's like an extra layer of protection. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to take your boning and you're going to stick it inside that opening and you're going to feed it around the whole the whole top of this opening. You're just gonna feed it all the way around that seam that you've created by stitching the top. Um, so, and you might have to finagle, like you might have to play with it a little bit, but for the most part, it should slide right in. And then once you get your boning to the other side, you'll be able to feel it. You want your boning to overlap um, because it's just better to have it overlap than have this little space here. So make sure that it, that you know it's going to overlap and just trim it put your piece up inside 
so it should be like right about here and I normally take like a clip or something and I just clip it so that I don't catch it in the sewing machine and what you're gonna want to do is you're going to go back to your sewing machine now and you're gonna stitch this closed so you keep your your boning on the inside if you think your boning is real loose you can stitch right below this but I would be really careful because if you hit this with your needle it's gonna break your needle there is a way to put your presser foot so that your needle is right along the edge of the boning and you could add an extra stitch all the way around I'm not gonna do this with this one because this is a really thin space and I don't feel like it needs it but if your um, if your rollover was real big and you wanted to have two lines for decorative purposes or something like that or you wanted to stop your boning from moving all around inside of there you could put an extra stitch line to hold it in place but because this isn't going to go very far because it's really small, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, so now that you've stitched that close, you're just going to want to cut off your threads. All right. And there is your open-ended snuggle sack. And if you notice, all your seams are hidden, so there's no... And actually, the cool part is you could technically reverse it and make it reversible. So um, it is up to you how you wanna do it, but it is 100% reversible and it is also open. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please, please click the like button. If you are not subscribed, please do so. It helps me out. Um, and then click the notification bell and you'll never miss an upload. And Please have an amazing week. Please be kind to each other and I will see you next time.